time of Imam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala. Remember one thing. Imam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala was an Imam of Aqidah, the science of Ilmul Kalam, before he was a Faqih. He was an Imam of Aqaid. Aqaid he had learned from the Sahaba. There is absolute consensus on this that Imam Abu Hanifa is a Tabi'i. Absolute consensus. There is no dispute in this. Numerous Sahaba he took hadith from. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala was one of his mashayikh. Abdullah ibn Abi Awfa was one of his mashayikh. Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari was one of his mashayikh. He narrated and there's a hadith which are known in the science of hadith as Ohadiyat. Ohadiyat are narrations where between the Imam and the Holy Prophet there's only one person. There's numerous Ohadiyat of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. Imam Malik has Sunariyat. There's two people. Im, Im, say, Imam Bukhari, Sulafiya. Imam Abu Hanifa, Ohadiyat. He says, I heard from Anas ibn Malik who told me that he heard the Holy Prophet sallallahu say this only one person in the Chim Sahabi Imam Abu Hanifa was a Tabi'i and all the students of Imam Abu Hanifa are from the th third generation Atba'u Tabi'i this is Salaf this is Imam Abu Hanifa wrote five books in Aqidah five books in just the Aqidah of Ahlu Sunnah Wal Jamaah Al Fiqh Al Akbar Al Fiqh Al Absal al wasiya al risala and al alim wal mutaalim five books on aqidah of imam abu hanifa imam abu hanifa taught this to his students this aqidah they taught it to their students then time came in third fourth century of hijri where a miracle happened in the ummah of the holy prophet alayhi salatu wasalam three individuals from three different parts of the Muslim world. Three individuals, Allah wa Ta'ala chose to preserve the true aqidah of the Salaf. This was Imam Tahavi in Egypt. Imam Abu Mansur al Maturidi in Mawara and Nahar, yani the lands which were beyond the river. These lands in today's time, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, all these lands around there. There's a river called, I think it was called in, in the books when we study uh, Nahar Jehun, but I think today it's called Amu Darya or something like that. It's a river which is about over 2,000 kilometers long, and the lands north of that were where. Uh, Imam Maturidi was from and all his followers and that 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 area of the world has always been Maturidi and Ottoman Empire the Mughal Empire Indian subcontinent they are followed okay Imam Abu Mansur Maturidi in this area of the world and Imam Abu Hassan al Ashari in Iraq now dates I'm going to mention very easy dates Imam Abu Mansur al Maturidi died in 333 Hijri, 333 Hijri. <coughs> Imam Abu Hassan al-Ashari, one year after that, he died, 334. And Imam Tahavi, he died 12 years before Imam Maturidi, 321 Hijri. Very easy date to remember. Imam Abu Mansur Maturidi, 333. Imam Abu Hassan al-Ashari, 334. Imam Tahavi, 321. These three Imams, they never met each other. They never met each other. They realized the problems that were happening. Mu'tazilis. <coughs> now entire mazhabs were emerging of Aqidah. There was Mujassima, Karamiya, Jahmiya, Mu'tazila, all of these various. So what do they do? They start working on Aqidah. And when they finished writing their books in Aqidah, they never met each other. All the Aqaid were same. 
No difference. No difference. Some minor differences between Imam Abu Maturidi and Imam Abu Hassan al Ashir. In where not the usul of waqai, in the furu and even furu ul furu of waqai. And some scholars point, like for example, Ibn Kamal Pasha, Ottoman great scholar. He was contemporary of Imam Suyuti. And some scholars say when it came to Ulum Akliya, he was greater than Imam Suyuti. Such great scholar. He died in 940. Ibn, Ibn Kamal Pasha. Yeah. Imam Siyuti died in 911, 911 Hijri. They were contemporaries. Ibn Kamal Pasha, he wrote a book, The Differences Between Maturidi Aqidah and Ashari Aqidah. And he said 12 differences. And some of them are just different expressions of the same meaning. In the usul of the Aqai, there was no difference between. Let me start with Abu Hassan al Ashari. Abu Hassan al Ashari, for 40 years, he was a Mu'tazili. Oh, 40 years, Imam Abu Hassan al Ashari was what? Mu'tazili. Mu'tazili. Oh, 40 years. And his teacher was the Imam of Mu'tazila in his time, Al Jubbari. All this detail, uh, there's no time to read books. Tabiyino Kadib al Muftari. Ibn Asakir, Fima Nusiba Ila Abil Hassan Al Ashari. In that book, all details there. 40 years, he became such a master of the Mu'tazila Akai, deviant Akai, that his teacher Al Jubai made him his Khalifa. When there's a debate, Abu Hassan, you go on. I have a debate. And he would finish. A time came when he was 40 years old, when he started having questions about this Mu'tazili Aqaid, various issues relating to the Mu'tazili, he started having questions. He started going to Jubai, to other teachers, no one had answers. He got very confused that, you know, I, we, we've been preaching this Aqidah, but there's these opinions which are not making sense. The historians write, Ibn Asakir writes, in this confusion, He asked Allah wa ta'ala for help. And he has a dream and sees Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are our Imams that we are connected. He has Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to Abu Hassan al Ashari that don't worry. Uh, all your Aqidah, remember Mu'tazli Aqai, a lot to do with just rational thinking and philosophical thinking. When it comes to things you are worried about, you're not sure about, in doubt about, weigh it with the Quran and Sunnah. This is why there's a lot of naqad in the Ashari texts. Weigh it against the Quran and Sunnah. And then whatever fits with the Quran and Sunnah, adopt that, everything else, leave it. So he wakes up, I think Ibn Asakir writes, 15 days he was away from people. No one, everyone was worried. He was a great teacher of the Mu'tazim. After 15 days, he comes in the mum, on the member and he says, I have left Mu'tazili. Now I am teaching you the Aqidah of the Ahlu Sunnah. Allah. Allah. Both of these two Imams, Imam Ash'ari and Imam Maturidi, were descendants of two great Sahaba. There's, there's some uh, some secrets about these people. Imam Abu Hassan al Ashari was a descendant of Abu Musa al Ashari. Ibn Asakir, in there he, he mentions how the Holy Prophet والسلام, used to praise the Ashari Yun, the Qabila Ashari in his time. And he used to. He used to point at Abu Hassan al Ashari, uh, uh, Abu Musa al Ashari. Abu Hassan al Ashari was from his descendants. <coughs> Abu Mansur al Maturidi was from the descendants of Abu Ayyub al Ansari. Oh. Now, 
Abu Mansur al-Maturidi remembered the vast majority of Hanafis throughout history, over a thousand years, have been following, when it comes to Aqidah, the text of the Maturidi tradition. Subhanallah. Abu Mansur al-Maturidi, <coughs> what, you see, they say, look, you follow Maturidi, you follow Ashari, we follow Salaf. You follow Salaf, you can't, you don't even have one chain to the Salaf. <coughs> Let us tell you what our Aqidah is. Abu Mansur al-Maturidi, he received the Aqaid statements and compilations of Imam Abu Hanifa. Between Imam Maturidi and Imam Abu Hanifa, there's only two or three people in the chain. So he received the aqaid of Imam Abu uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala. What does Imam Abu Mansur al-Maturidi do? He makes it a full personal project of his life to explain what Imam Abu Hanifa's aqidah is. That Imam Abu Hanifa got from the Sahaba who got from the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu He explained this, these aqaid. Imam Abu Mansur al Maturidi was not just a great scholar of Ilm al Aqaid, and like Allah Azad, when he mentions him, he calls him Sayyidul Hanafiya, Imam of the Hanafi. He was also a great <coughs> spiritual person. <laughs> Very spiritual person. Sahibul Karamat, Imam Abu Mansur al Maturidi. He writes numerous works. Two of his famous works are his Kitab al Tawheed on Aqidah and his tafsir, Ta'wilat wa Ahli Sunnah. After 100, 150 years, another Imam from this tradition comes. His name is Abu Mu'een and Nasafi. Nasafi is also from this Uzbekistan area. Great ulama came from this area. He wrote a book, Tafsiratul Adilla, which again became a textbook for the Aqidah of Abu Mansur al-Maturidi. What was that? Again, explaining Imam Abu Mansur al-Maturidi's Aqidah, what was that Akida? Abu Hanifa said, this is the Salaf Sakina. Salaf Sakina. Then after his student, Abu Hafs Umar and Nasafi wrote Al-Aqaid, which is taught today everywhere in the Indian subcontinent, in the uh, lands of Wara and Nahar, those lands, especially in the, even in the Ottoman Empire, these books, the Al-Aqaid al-Nasafiya. This was Abu Hafs and Nasafi's book, he again explained the earlier text. They, they're doing what? Explaining, explaining the Aqidah of the Salaf. Explaining the Aqidah of the Salaf. And uh, so, this Imam Nasafi, who wrote these Aqai, he was teacher of Imam Marghinani, who wrote the Al Hidayah that we studied, the book in Fiqh Hanafi Al Hidayah, his teacher. And he also wrote, and I'll end with this. Uh, he also wrote a book called Al Qand Fi Zikre Ulama I Samar Qand. He wrote a book about all the great scholars that have appeared in Samar Qand. When I was reading that book, I came across, I can't remember, number 11 or number 12, Tarjama, any biography. It says Al Khadir. The Prophet Khizr biography. So what does Imam Nasafi do? He says he writes the full Nasab of Hazrat Khadir salam, all the way to Hazrat Nuh salam, full Nasab. And he says Hazrat Khidr salam, has appeared in Samarkand numerous times at the Masajid and at Mazarat of Samarkand. Hazrat Khidr Islam has appeared in these two. And then he says, amongst the people who he has appeared to, one of them is Imam Abu Mansur al Maturidi. And Abu Mansur al Maturidi met him and he mentions the name of the Khanqa. Ribat in Arabic is called Khanqa, place of Ahlul Tasawwur. He said it was this Khanqa, mentions it, where Imam Abu Mansur al Maturidi came. And he met Sayyidina Khidr salam, and he asked Sayyidina Khidr to make dua for him and Sayyidina Khidr made dua for him. 
This is from the Karamat of Imam Abu Mansur al Matul. So these, our Aqaid, are Aqaid from the time of the Salaf. These people, their Aqaid are from Ibn Taymiyyah, Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab, Najdi, and both of these two people, they don't even have a direct Salaf to these two people. Our, we have direct to the Salaf. Time of Abu Hanifa, that's where our Aqaid, huh, it became known as Maturidi, not because Imam Maturidi invented these, Imam Mashari invented, because they explained the Aqaid of the Salaf. And, and they explained the Aqaid of the Salaf. Imam Tahavi was in Cairo. Imam Tahavi also has a sanad to Imam Abu Hanifa. And Imam Tahavi wrote a book, Al Aqaid al Tahaviyah. And unfortunately, the Salafis always publish Aqaid Tahaviyah commentary by an individual called Ibn Abil Is. Why? Imam Tahavi, he writes at the beginning, this is the Akita of Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Abu Yusuf, Imam. Uh, Imam Muhammad Rahimahumullah Ta'ala, this is the Aqidah of Ahlu Sunnah and he lists all the Aqaid. So he has a chain back to Imam Abu Hanifa. Accurate Aqaid, but the Salafis, they do what? They get this book, they found a commentary by Ibn Abil Is, and Ibn Abil Is is one of the students of Ibn Al Qayyim. He was born a few, two, one, two years after Ibn Taymiyyah passed away, but he studied with all the students of Ibn Taymiyyah. So, He's written a commentary where he sometimes disagrees with Imam Tahavi. He's inserting all of Ibn Taymiyyah's aqaid in there. So they found this book, published it, thousands and hundreds of thousands they spread. All of the other commentaries of the true Ahlu Sunnah, they'll never publish. They publish this book. Ah, oh, this is the Salah of Aqidah Tahavi. But the commentary is by their own uh, scholar, student of Ibn, Ibn al Qayyim. And uh, in there, when Imam Tahavi says, ash the, the, the intercession of the Holy Prophet is, is true, you have to believe in it. There in the commentary, he'll start talking about doing the Vasul is wrong, doing Vasila is wrong, or, or, or Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah's Aqai was something apart from Ahlu Sunnah. The mainstream, 90% of the Muslims in the history, thousand year history of Islam, 90% were Ashairah and Maturidiyya. Because they were different lands, they had different texts, different ways of expressing the Aqidah was the same. Aqidah was the same. Allah wa ta'ala keep us connected with the Ahlul Haq, keep us connected with the people of not just the knowledge of Sharia and the, uh, the Sharia itself, but the people of Tariqah also. Allah wa ta'ala keep us on the right path.